Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and welcome to part one of Atari 2600 Collection. We're going to start off here with Asteroids, possibly one of the most famous of the old school era games. <laughs> Won't play fingers. Uh, the telegame series is made by Sears and Roebuck. You can maybe see a lot of the information right here on the cart, but this won't always be the case, so I'll be adding in graphics and stuff to chime in all the extra details, like the dates and the publishers and everything else. Um, the numbers up here shows how many game modes are on the Telegames games. In this case, Asteroids has 64, which sounds a lot more impressive than it actually is. Uh, being the first Atari games group, I'll show the cart a little better here, as this is the standard design. And check out the system collection videos to show how all this stuff goes into the different systems. Now the Atari itself is a different system for me than a lot of them because it was my youngest of years. We got it in the Christmas of 1980 and the NES came along in the Christmas of 1985. So in that time period I played this thing a ton, but as much as my memory is all over the nostalgia of it, I don't have specific stories around these like I might certain other games. I'll try to remember what I can and hopefully that will be enough to entertain everybody for hours on end. And <laughs> if not, I'm deeply sorry. And you'll notice the instruction book here. I have uh, the books to most of the Atari games, but a few exceptions. Sadly, none of the boxes. But uh, I'll flip through these here, and uh, <laughs> I see one of my old scores in here. 219,000 rolled over twice. <laughs> and that is Asteroids. And here's Space Invaders, equally as famous as Asteroids. This thing has had so many variations and revisions and everything else made out of it over the years for decades. It's hard to find somebody that doesn't know a little something about Space Invaders, at least where it comes from. I wouldn't be surprised if at all if it's all over uh, cell phones and stuff. <laughs> at least the early ones. And it is probably one of the more faithfully perfect adaptation of an arcade game into the 2600. You know, kind of. I don't have the book for this one, but uh, I... Adventurer. Uh, you guys have probably heard me talk about this one before, but it's just a fantastic game in so many ways, in my own mind. The nostalgia trip is just ridiculous. I've even played this a couple of times over the last year. And <laughs> what is there to say that the title doesn't already tell you? It is an adventure game in its purest form. You're out on a quest to save a chalice from a bunch of dragons who looks like ducks. You've got items and... Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, great. Now Chase, uh, a lot of you people will probably recognize this game as the precursor to Snake on uh, cell phones everywhere, but Chase, yeah, basically you're trying to trap the other guy into his, it's like Tron in a way, the, the light cycle bikes on Tron, really much more to say than that, it is what you're looking at and not a whole lot more. Um, well, there, there is one thing. Also has uh, an art mode where you can actually draw pictures with a kind of extra sketch style. So it was trying to do some interesting stuff for its very limited setup, but uh, yeah, you can't get much more of a basic game than this one. Speedway 2. Uh, now you might notice there's this weird discoloration here, but I think that was always that way. I don't think that's been burned in. You can tell from the top there. Now you can tell here that it's actually got some very different kinds of modes with the jets and the, well, the cars and everything, but. Ultimately, it's almost the exact same sort of game, just different avatars. Um, the the planes can shoot, and there's the cars, as you can see, it's, it's basically a dodge and weave sort of thing. And the game was played with paddles, that uh, you could see there in the yeah, slalom. Um, whatever rollerball is there. And then there's the planes. Uh, there's even a math version there. And then the scoop ball, which was kind of interesting because you had to avoid some types and collect the others. And that is Speedway 2. Human Cannonball. That's right, Human Cannonball. This is kind of a different sort of game. It's basically just trying to read the wind speed and adjusting a cannon to knock your little fellow into the basket. That is literally the entirety of this game. It's difficult and hilarious at the same time. <laughs> So, I can't say it got played a lot, but it was definitely an enjoyable piece of unusual entertainment. Yeah, it even had the little window things. There we go. And football. 
Now, I didn't play football a whole lot because I've never been much of a sports person, and this one certainly didn't change my mind any. I don't know. I think it was a little weird for me to wrap my head around, and everybody else was a lot better at it than I was, so that didn't help matters. Which is the case with a lot of these two-player games. I was always playing people much older than I was, so it made it, it made a lot harder on me. Some plays on the back here. The last for this session is target fun. A dog ear problem here. It's not in too bad a shape. Now, I used to play this one a lot. It had a lot of different modes. Um, virtually the same game. You're just shooting stuff in different variations. Here's some of the selections here. I don't know. I, I, there was something strange about and satisfying about this game, about just blowing stuff up randomly. All sorts of different target games. Um, planes, boats, faces. And I just... I had a great time with it. And that'll do for part one of my Atari 2600 collection. I'm going to continue doing the rest of these and pretty much all my collection in a very similar standard to this. Uh, so if you guys like the setup that I'm doing, please let me know. If there's something you don't like about it and need me to change, I'll certainly get on that. And I'll see you all next time.